Good morning. Good morning. How you doing, Alan? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing all right. Um, I just made you. Uh, I gave you the presenter privileges because I figured you're the one leading this, correct? <laughs> I guess so. Okay, so you That's have presenter. Good. Yeah, you have presenter privileges. Okay. Um, uh, let me make sure I can share my screen. Yep. Please yep. try and pull up this presentation. Mm -hmm. so, so I also understand Aliyah mentioned that you needed a breakout session on the, uh, according to the agenda at this point number seven. Uh, you guys are going to have a business meeting. Yes, Did you want to yeah. do it in a breakout room? Um, I think. There was a I, I, what you said. I think that yes, if there's a way to do that, um, that would be ideal. I guess the if there's anyone from the public, essentially, they can't want to be allowed to come into that session. Yeah, so what I can do is a breakout session. I'm just going to need to know who all should be in there. Cuz I'm going to have to manually assign them into those into that breakout room. Okay. You all can see this? Yep. Yep. What if yes. I do Now, um Aliyah, do you want to go do you want to control the slides? Um I can. Yeah. Is it yeah. who's given the presentation um once we get to here? So Daniel, Daniel and Mr. Watts and uh, Maurice. So they're gonna be together. Daniel, would you rather control the slides when you all are going or do you prefer I do it? We can't hear you, Daniel. Daniel, you're muted. You guys are yeah, you're muted. Here we go. It would not let me unmute myself initially. I didn't know how to do that. Okay, I got it. It's my camera. Yeah, I can control it because Mr. Watts giving us hand cues over here. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you all, let's see if you all can share your screen and control it. How do I stop How do I stop this? All right, I'll be right back. Share. It will not let me share. It won't. No. I wonder if you log on. Now we are. Okay. Now where is our media? Jason, our biggest concern is just that uh, if members of the public are on um, during the time that we have the closed session. So maybe I can send you the list of all the members of the council and then um our staff can stay on for the closed session yeah yeah you well, saying he'd need to know exactly who would need to go into that breakout room um it'll be um at this point it'll be daniel Eccles and i we at least daniel so daniel will be me and Eccles. um i like tom but she's probably taking the notes and stuff tom is on there yeah, yeah, everyone from our office, obviously Alan, and then all the council members, all the members of the, yeah. the court. So, they're going to have things they're going to want us to do, we'll say. 
Now, are you all able to see the presentation? Not yet. Uh, have you tried sharing it? Again, I thought I just shared it. Try one more time. This is the screen too. Yep, I can see it. That's good. Yeah, I can see it now. Let me just make sure every slide looks good. Oh, that's it. Let's start with it here. Some water or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've, we've got about five minutes to our scheduled start time. Um, Everybody seems to be okay. Uh, Daniel, quick question. The machine that you guys are using for WebEx, is it plugged into a hard line in the office or are you on Wi Fi? We're on Wi Fi. Okay. You guys don't have a drop in there uh, that would, that might work because you're chopping up a little bit. So if we can get you on the hard line, that would be better. I don't know if I can do that from a laptop. Oh, you don't have a docking station with you? Nope. Okay. All right. We'll make it work. Um, do you want to take the presentation just in case it happens, just in case something happens and we got to keep going? You have it? Uh, I do not have it. Oh, actually, I do have it. No, I, just, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think everybody, everybody on this, uh, Aaliyah, Alan has a copy of this, right? So who no. wants to, who wants to drive is the real issue. Well, we're going to do it here, but I will say in case. Oh yeah. It's, we all have a, we all have a copy of it. If anything happens, I can pull it up really quickly. But that's the point I'm making. Yeah. Yep. I got you. Now, are you all only seeing the PowerPoint or do you see our little screen as well? I see you guys I as see. well. You don't want that? You just want the PowerPoint screen? Yeah, yeah it's PowerPoint. So, so they start. Yeah,
Alan, we got about one minute. Are you good to go? Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get started. I don't think we have all of the members yet, but I just want to be mindful of time. Um, so if everyone who isn't speaking could please mute. All right. Daniel, can you? Okay, good. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the inaugural Tipped Workers Coordinating Council meeting. Um, my name is Alan Karnofsky, Deputy Chief of Staff for the DC Department of Employment Services. Um, we are excited to do this um, virtually today, but hopefully soon we will be able to be meeting in person. Um, and I wanted to go through the agenda briefly, and then um, we will kick things off. So this is the introduction. Um, if Moda is on, we're going to do a swearing in. We just we had one new uh, council uh, appointee that was named yesterday, so we want uh, them to be sworn in properly. Um, but then we will go through the introduction of all of the tipped uh, council members. We'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, we will have a round of public comments if we have anyone from the public come or from the public here. Um, then the team at DOES is going to do a overview of uh, the tipped wage law um, for everyone's awareness. Uh, then we have some uh, business to do. We're going to select our chair uh, per the law um, in this first meeting and set up some regularly scheduled meetings uh, to move forward. Um, let's go ahead. I see Director Walker is on the line. So let's go ahead and um, I'll pass it over to Director Walker from the Mayor's Office of Talent Appointments to swear in our new member, uh, Mr. Zachary Hoffman. Good morning, Alan. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. I'm not sure if my video is showing. It looks like it is not. Uh, can you guys see me as well? We cannot. Oh, now we can. Yeah. Now we can. Sorry for that delay. I've been having a computer problem. First of all, uh, thanks, Alan, for your leadership, and thank you all for being members of the TIP Workers Coordinating Council. Uh, we swore in a couple of public members, and it actually wouldn't be a, hurt at all to swear in everybody, whether you're a public member or government appointee. Uh, so I want to do that now for all of you. Uh, we will then send each of you uh, an oath. That will be the oath that I'm administering now uh, that you'll just sign and return to us. Um, the first thing I want to do is thank you all because this is going to be a fast and furious project that's going to really help uh, make sure that uh, very important people in the District of Columbia's economy have a fair shot. So thank you, whether you're a public member or a government appointee, for your leadership on the TIP Workers Coordinated Council. So if everyone... Uh, if you can please unmute yourselves uh, and raise your right hands uh, and repeat after me. Uh, and a few times, twice, I will say, say your name. And if you can say your name in that place, uh, that'll be great. So everyone, please raise your right hands and repeat after me. I instate your name. I'm Monica Palacios. Having been appointed as a member of. Having been appointed as a member of. The TIP Workers Coordinating Council. The tip tip member coordinating council. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. swear. And affirm that. And affirm that. That I instate your name. That I, Monica I Tracy, Tracy, will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Will support, support and defend, defend the Constitution of the United States. United States. And, and the laws of the District of Columbia. And the laws of the, the, District, laws of Columbia. Of the District of Columbia. And I will perform the duties. And I will and perform, I will perform the, duties the duties that may be assigned to me. That may be assigned, assigned to, to me. me. As a member of the TIP Workers Coordinating Council. As, as a member, member of the TIP Workers Coordinating Council. To the best of my ability. 
to the best Mr. of my ability. Without fear or favor. Without, Without fear, fear or, favor. or favor. That I will exercise my best judgment. That, that I will exercise, exercise my, my best, best judgment. judgment. And consider and each matter before me. And, and consider each matter, matter, matter before me. From the viewpoint of the best interest. From the viewpoint of the best interest. Of the District of Columbia. Of the District of Columbia. Columbia. As a whole. As a whole. As a whole. And, I will and I will faithfully discharge these duties. And I will faithfully discharge these duties. There we are. Congratulations and thank you all. Uh, more importantly, uh, thank you on behalf of our TIP workers uh, in the District of Columbia. And your guys are going to hopefully come up with some really good proposals that DOS and all the other agencies that are here will help implement. So thank you all. Uh, and Alan, I'll turn it over to you. And thank you again for your leadership. Thank you, Director Walker. Um, and thank you for your leadership um, and getting helping us to get this set up. Uh, um, and getting the members appointed. Uh, so next, we won't waste any time. We're going to do introductions of the appointed members. Um, and if you could talk about, uh, you see your designation here, um, but you can also talk about uh, your passion uh, for serving on this council, your role, and um, we will go from there. So. I'm Alan Karnofsky, Deputy Chief of Staff, Department of Employment Services. Uh, as you all know, we are charged with enforcing the tipped workers laws in the district, um, and we have great, great members of the team that will be joining these council meetings. You're going to meet them a little bit later. Uh, they work very hard um, and they're very passionate as, as well. Um, so I'm excited for you to meet them all. Um, but I've been in the district. Uh, district government since 2015 um, ha and have been at DOES since 2019 um, and I'm learning new things every single day um, and I'm excited to to work with you all on this extremely important uh, council. I'll pass it off to uh, John from DCRA. Hi everybody, uh, my name is John Cool. I'm the Chief of External Affairs at DCRA. I'm very pleased to be working with all of you on this council. Um, I've been with DCRA for a little over two years, and before that was at the Department of Public Works. Um, as I'm sure you know, uh, DCRA plays a role in licensing all businesses in the district, including uh, restaurants. And over the last year, we've also played a big role in helping restaurants uh, with their streeteries and being able to expand um, their seating locations out onto sidewalks. Um, and, and now we're just full steam ahead and trying to help businesses get back and, and open and take advantage of the good weather. So look forward to working with all of you. Hi, everyone. This is Monica Palacio, Director of the Office of Human Rights. Really thrilled to be part of this team and join the council um, that will be you know, overseeing and stewarding the work. Um, as you know, OHR is the district's uh, discrimination investigation agencies. So we enforce um, civil rights statutes and anti-discrimination laws, both local and federal, and workers are my passion. So 80% of the cases we investigated OHR are employment-based discrimination cases. We're also very involved um, in preventing sexual harassment. And I think a, an important element of the statute we'll be enforcing is the a goal of making the workplace safe for tipped workers and making sure that they are free from harassment. So I'm very excited about that and looking forward to working with you all. And next, um, Jennifer. Hello, all. Jennifer McCahill here with the Mayor's Office of Nightlife and Culture. I'm the Community Outreach Specialist. Um, I think. We're all aware of uh, how busy our office has been throughout COVID trying to assist the nightlife industry and the hospitality industry. Um, I'm thrilled to be a part of this uh, council and I look forward to working with everybody. Thanks, Jennifer. All right, let's go to our two uh, public members. Uh, we'll start with Jared. Hi, uh, good morning. My name is Jared Spam, uh, sommelier at 
uh, Mylene Omare in the Thompson Hotel in Navy Yard. Um, happy to be here and happy to uh, give insight from tip workers. Thanks, Jared. Uh, Tracy? Yeah, I'm Tracy Javier. I bartend over at the W Hotel at POV, and um, I'm part of the Local 25 Union. So I'm excited to be here as well and excited to be a representative to tip workers. Thank you, Tracy. And Zach. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, everyone being here today. Uh, my name is Zachary Hoffman. I am the executive vice president of the DC Bar and Restaurant Workers Alliance. Um, I'm also a tipped worker here in the district. And I see a lot of people in this uh, in this meeting here today that I have worked with in the past or would like to work with more. And I'm very excited for this group of people. I think there's a lot of good talent here. So I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you, Zach. Um, we are, I mean, I mean, I'm really excited to work with you all. And I know we have a few more vacancies that hopefully will be filled um, shortly. Um, but next, uh, I want to deviate a little bit from the agenda because uh, the director of the Department of Employment Services on, is on. Um, she's our mom in chief. She's uh, an amazing leader to look up to and has been uh, dealing with a lot during the pandemic. Um, and so I'm happy that she's uh, come to visit us during this inaugural meeting. So I want to introduce uh, Dr. Unique Morris Hughes for a few words. Thanks, Alan. I, I appreciate it. I, whenever I hear mom and chief, it always makes me uh, uh, smile because I am doing double duty 100% uh, of the time. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, first, I want to say thank you so much for um, volunteering your time to be part of the TIP Workers Coordinating Council. I think this work is extremely important. Um, and the pandemic has really put a spotlight um, on opportunities that we can coordinate uh, and really work together um, around this body of work. Um, you're in really good hands with Alan and my team. Um, we have been planning and preparing for this for a while. Um, so they're eager uh, to work with all of you. Um, I will be attending as much as I possibly uh, uh, can um you know over the next year or so and um i look forward to get to work so thank you so much and alan i'll turn it right back over to you thank you very much uh director and i believe next on our agenda we're gonna go through uh, or we're gonna see if there's anyone from the public for public comment but i don't think anyone technically from the public is on. And I, I, I will note that this meeting was noted, um, noticed 48 hours in advance. Um, we posted on our website, we did some social media. Um, so hopefully moving forward, we will get some more engagement um, and more people from the public to come and listen in and provide their comments as well. Um, and we can actually discuss as a council how we engage the public as well. Um, so seeing no one from the public, we will move on. And I believe next on our agenda, we're gonna introduce the, the team uh, behind the law and that's working to enforce every day, uh, the Office of Wage Hour. So mm, I'll pass it to Mr. Watts, the Associate Director for the Office of Wage Hour. And you're on mute. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Watts. I'm the Senior Director here at the Department of Employment Services, Office of Wage Hour. Also on, on uh, this meeting, in this meeting is um, my boss and uh, leader, uh, Mr. Muhammad Sheik, and, and, and today. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Daniel King, who is a supervisory program analyst here, and Morris Eccles, who is the manager of coordinating tip audits. And we also have with us Tom Gay, 
who um, will be the coordinator for the council and get them in contact uh, as well. Um, we are really excited about the work, particularly, you know, making sure that district residents who suffer with many work are paid properly. Um, our goal is, is to ensure that employees in the District of Columbia comply with all DC wage laws and employees in the District of Columbia are fairly and probably compensated for work performed in the District of Columbia. Um, the Office of Wage Hour serves employers and employees of the District of Columbia by one, performing intake interviews for claimants and authors, investigating claims, conducting compliance audits, and working to recover back wages, as well as engaging the public. Several of the laws that we will highlight today are in our BC Wage Payment and Collection Law, um, the Minimum Wage Amendment Act of 2013, the Cruise Sick and Safe Leave Act of 2008, the Living Wage Act of 2006, the Wage Step Prevention Amendment Act of 2014, and the BC Sustainable Omnibus Act, which we also uh, refer to as the Community Benefit Law. Mm -hmm. Here in our office, we have three primary wage recovery options. One, uh, wage hour administrative investigation. This is an administrative process where the claim is handled by the Office of Wage Hour on behalf of the claim. We also have an administrative law judge hearing, which are conducted by the Office of Administrative Review. This is a form hearing requested by either the claimant or the employer where those individuals are representing themselves in front of the administrative law judge. And then the third is the civil action court proceeding. Also, the attorney general prosecutes the civil action. And so, uh, through our claims process, uh, individuals are able to file claims in our office. Uh, we do accept both anonymous claims. We also do red, random audits um, as well. I mean, so we're looking uh, employers have 20 days to respond to a notice from us. For the law, we have 60 days once a claim is filed to make a determination. We look at initial evidence collected. We request, if it request for additional information. We send a notice of claim. We make an initial determination, as I mentioned before. And, and once we make that initial determination, employer or the employee have a right to appeal or enter into a conciliation agreement regarding that claim. The, the, the Fair Time Minimum Wage Amendment Act. This act amends the Minimum Wage Act of 1992 to increase the minimum wage in the District of Columbia to $50 an hour by 2020. Also, the minimum wage for tip workers um, increased to $5 an hour by 2020. This July 1st, 2021, the minimum wage will be $15.20 and the tip wage will be $5.05 5 per hour. Every employer subject to the provision of that must post the minimum wage post in or about the premises in which an employee cover is employed. All right, hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, DC code 32-1003 F1 covers tip employees. Employers may pay a tip minimum wage. As of July 1st, 2020, the minimum wage required to be paid by any employer in the District of Columbia to any employee who receives tips or gratuities is $5 an hour, provided that the employee actually receives tips or gratuities in an amount at least equal to the difference between the hourly wage paid and the minimum wage. Beginning on July 1st, 2021, again, employees who receive tips or gratuities shall be $5.05 an hour. All right, now the requirements in 32 days, 1003, to pay the $5 tip minimum wage. An employee receiving tips must be informed by the employer and can use the notice of hire to inform the employee of the, of the requirement. Uh, all gratuities received by the employee have been retained by the employer, except that this provision shall not be construed to prohibit the pooling of gratuities among employees who customarily receive tips or gratuities. Uh, these type of employees include waiters, waitresses, valets, 
counter personnel who serve customers, busters, service bartenders. Uh, also, a ballot tip pool may not include employees who do not customarily receive or customarily and regularly receive tips, such as managers, dishwashers, cooks, chefs, and janitors. Thank you, Mr. Echoes. We just want to clarify that those categories of workers are based on the USDOL fact sheet number 15. And then also we want to show you a sample of what the hiring notice looks like. This is a template that has been created by our office and it is available for download on our website. It, at the bottom section there, it's not very clearly, but it does have a section where employers tell their workers that they will be receiving tips to bring them from the uh, the tip minimum wage up to the regular minimum wage that is required by the law. As we move on to some of the employer reporting requirements. So not only does that employer make sure that their employee is receiving the tip minimum wage, but they must report those hours and wages to the District of Columbia on a quarterly basis. You're gonna tell how much that employer made in total wages, and you're gonna make sure that that report is received by our office within 30 days. We have a couple of ways that we receive that report. The first is through the tip wage employee self-service form. Let's talk more about that, Mr. Eckers. So the mayor created an internet-based portal for online reporting of the quarterly wage reports to fire by subsection A of this section. An employer shall submit its quarterly report wage reports online unless the employer claims that online reporting creates a hardship, in which case the employer shall submit its reports in a hard copy form. So we have two ways in which employers may submit those reports. One is our, our employer self-service portal. Uh, and you see an example of that on this page here. Yep. So the U.S. created the internet-based portal for does someone have a question? The U.S. has created an internet-based portal for reporting tip wages in conjunction with UI tax quarterly wage submissions. And then we also receive those reports in hard copy uh, if, if for whatever reason an employer has a hardship with using that portal, they can submit their, their report by email, by fax, or by mail. Next, we have the Tip Wage Workers Fairness Amendment Act requirements. Let's take a pause there. I thought uh, Alan wanted to see if anyone had questions so far. Are there any questions from the council at this point? I, I don't know. Is the microphone movable? Just it's a little hard to to hear you guys. Well, we'll definitely try to project more. Okay, thank you. No questions on the laws thus far or the work of our office? No. Okay. So some of the new requirements as of January 1st, 2020, uh, third party payroll businesses are required to process payroll for an employer that employs tip workers and hotel employers that employ the tip worker shall submit a quarterly wage report for the preceding calendar quarter to the mayor no later than 30 days after the end of each calendar quarter. Each quarterly wage report shall certify each tip worker was paid at least the required minimum wage, including gratuities, and shall include the following. Uh, itemized pay statements for each tip workers, uh, their name, uh, average hourly wage received per week during the quarter, total hours worked at or above the minimum hourly wage established under 32-1003F per week, gross wages received per week and total gratuities received per week. Now for a hotel employer, certification that all the information in the report is accurate. For third party payroll businesses, we need a certification that the information in the report was generated using the same payroll data used to generate the information required to be furnished to employees pursuant to 32-1008B. And if tips were shared, we need a copy of the employer's tip sharing policy used during that order. And just to know, uh, employees are required to provide that tip sharing policy to our office, and we are required by law to collect. 
There are some other requirements for employers outside of the portal and that deals with training. Uh, each employer must have training for the TIP portal system and that training will be provided by the OES, our Office of Wage Hour. Um, it will be coming up in the next couple of months as the UI system is being updated. The TIP portal system is being updated in conjunction. So once those updates are final, we'll be providing uh, specification guidelines for how the reports are going to be submitted. Also, there is sexual harassment training requirements. The sexual harassment training is going to be done by the Office of Human Rights. Uh, we are actually going to be working with the Office of Human Rights to receive certifications from those employers that their human rights training has been completed. Uh, so we did the, uh, start those discussions already. And then the last requirement for training is an overall on DC wage law training. Uh, there are a number of webinars that our office puts on throughout the year. There's also various law firms, uh, community advocacy groups, as well as other groups around DC that provides DC wage law training. Uh, employers and managers for companies that have tip workers must make sure that they are training as well. So there are new website requirements for this law. And so we must create and maintain a website with the following laws. The Living Wage Act of 2006, the Human Rights Act of 1977, the Digital Columbia Family and Medical Leave Act of 1990, the Leave Act of 1994, the Cruise Sick and Safe Leave Act of 2008, the Minimum Wage Act Revision Act of 1992, the Building Service Employee Minimum Work Week Act of 2016, Protecting Pregnant Workers Fairness Act of 2014, an act to provide for the payment and collection of wages in the District of Columbia, which we also refer to as wage payment law, District of Columbia Workers' Compensation Act of 1979, and the Workplace Safety during the COVID-19 Pandemic Temporary Amendment Act of 2021. I think it's good to note too that all of the labor requirements that are on this website it's from the agencies that this tip council represents. So it's great that you guys are here to help with this effort. Um, and then there's also going to be a poster created that will have all of these uh, links to these sites on there. And I think the law requires a QR code to be on that poster. So anybody in the public can hit the QR code and get directed to this website. So our office will will also launch a public education campaign to educate the public uh, important about how we implement all our laws um, to inform them, both employers and employees of District of Columbia. And so we will host webinars and educate the employees and employees on the new requirements. We will build a partnership with our sister agencies, community stakeholders, and other offices within the OES that have compliance enforcement authority. This office also have public education grantees. And so we have two grantees, the community-based organizations that engage both employees and employers in the District of Columbia to ensure that they understand the requirements of the law as well as the benefits that are, um, that are provided to them. So again, um, I want to, uh, Tom Gay, who is the, is, is the tip, Coordinator County in contact as well as Mr. Echoes. Uh, but you can reach any of us by emailing us at owh.ask at dc.gov or um, calling us directly at 202 671 And we look forward to working with you and supporting uh, the council. Um, Thank you, uh, Mr. Watts uh, and team. Um, any other questions or any questions about uh, that overview of what uh, the team does and what some of the requirements for the council are? Hi, can we um, maybe get that uh, presentation emailed to us as well? Just so I can go through it and stop again. Most definitely, yeah. 
So um, what I got from the presentation is we have a lot of work to do as a council um, to assist with uh, these requirements. Um, and we will be discussing that. Uh, if there's no other comments, next on the agenda, it mentions a closed session, but we don't actually uh, need to close the session to perform this business. Um, we this should be open to the to the public, um, but we have to select a chair, um, and the chair cannot be a DC government member, so it has to be a non-government member. So if at this time anyone that is not a government member wants to uh, nominate themselves to be the chair of this council, um, please let us know. I, I will offer myself to that role. I know um, I have a lot of experience with the inner workings of the DC government. I'm also an ANC commissioner, so I don't know if that excludes me and my ability to perform that, but I'm open to the idea. I will also nominate myself. All right, we have uh, I nominate myself too, sorry. <laughs> All right. So we have um maybe can everyone see each other or do we need to stop sharing the screen? Maybe that will be a little easier. Mr. Watson, if you could stop sharing. Okay. That's easier for me. Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, Mr. Zach Hoffman, uh, Mr. Jared, S is it Span? Span and um, Miss Tracy Javier, um, who have all nominated themselves, and those are actually the only ones that could could do it. Um, so thank you all for nominating yourselves. Um, we have some time, so if we want to do maybe a little bit more about. You know, you can express for everyone else why you want to be chair um, and advocate for yourselves, pitch yourselves to us, and we will um, then we'll go through and take a vote. So we'll start uh, with Mr. Hoffman. Sure. Um, I've, like I mentioned earlier in my uh, introduction, I've worked with a lot of the people in this uh, council already. Um, my organization has been working with the council and actually pushed for this law to even exist to form this council and work with uh, tipped workers and employers in DC government in a collaborative way to um, better assist the ecosystem and more tightly regulate and oversee the operations of tipped wage workers and uh, ensure that they're being taken care of in the best possible way. Um, I'm also, like I mentioned, an ANC commissioner. <clears throat> this is my first term. And I just want a clarification that I can be the chair of this and still be in that role. I don't want to, you know, make anything difficult for anyone. Um, I'm not a paid employee of the district, so there's there's that uh, aspect of it. But basically, with my organization, we've been working for a long time now to support independently the operations of tip workers in the industry. And I think this is a great opportunity to kind of, like I mentioned, integrate the collaborative effort of all of the people involved and hopefully uh, we'll get some good work done here and and see if there's anything else we can add and i you know that's my pitch thank you zach um i don't i mean i don't know the answer to your question um but i can look into that uh while the others are speaking try to get a quick answer um sure. we'll go to jared next Um, well, I have been a tip worker um, for going on about seven years now, but I um, live in the district. I have since uh, I was about three or four, so uh, this is my home. Um, that's that's always first and foremost for me. Uh, second for me is that um, I just had children, so uh, this is my family's home as well. Um, I think that 
if the pandemic has taught us anything, and especially the, the formation of this council is a uh, testament, um, is that the uh, tipped workers and, and the way that the laws have been um, abided by um, on behalf of tipped workers does need change. Um, I certainly do not have the experience that Zach has. Um, I am not as familiar with the inner workings of DC government, um, but I, in this case, uh, I see that as a positive rather than a negative. I think that um, fresh eyes and fresh perspective um, from someone who is deeply dedicated to this city and to its economy and to um, uh, the hospitality industry is is paramount. So uh, I think I'm the best one to to bring those skills to the chair's seat. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Tracy. Hi, uh, um, I've worked in hospitality for about 11 years um, at the W and as a way I've been almost a captain to uh, my coworkers and peers in the hotel and um, develop great relationships with uh, management as well in my hotel. And through that, I feel I'm qualified because I've advocated for my, my coworkers as well as have a lot of networking with other people in restaurants and hospitality and have seen like what people have wanted. So that's why I think I might not have as much experience, but I think my passion will show through more. <clears throat> Thank you, Tracy. Um, does anyone have any questions or, or comments uh, for the for the three nominees? Mm, no. Um, I'll give my my pers I'll try to start some sort of conversation off. Uh, um, I think that um, obviously we have, I think it would be great to have uh, someone who is um, on the ground and working um, within the industry um, as our chair. Um, and I think Mr. Hoffman, uh, I know your advocacy has been great um, for tipped workers um, and doesn't go unnoticed. Uh, However, I do feel strongly that um, either Jared or Tracy would serve as well as chair as um, being that they are, you know, directly affected and they can um, really speak to what's happening within within their workplaces. Um, so that's that's my opinion. Just a note that I am a tip worker and I work currently as the, a bartender in DC full time. Well, not quite full time, but almost trying to get there. Any other comments? Um, I'm thrilled with the 3 options. Uh, Zach, I don't know, know how you do it all. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I champion everybody that's here. Um, I, I don't necessarily have anything else to say. I just wanted to comment on that. Um, I'll ask it's, um, you all seem qualified, so it, it, it's hard to kind of decide. Um, just thinking for yourselves personally, do, do each of you feel like the time commitment is something that you would, would be able to do? Certainly. Definitely. Okay. I guess my question was unhelpful. <laughs> um, I have a question since, since we. I think we need a little more dialogue as well. Um, so, uh, I'm very conscious of the fact that, um, that while there's a lot of diversity in the industry, um, that, you know, African American workers, Latino workers, immigrant workers, um, because of COVID and because of historical inequality, um, can face some of the most devastating, um, effects and i've heard that treatment of uh employees that are black and latino um you know as disposable or as less than um 
you know, there's just a, a socioeconomic stratification that we could talk about for hours, right? But I think it's worth noting from a civil rights perspective, from the perspective of, you know, the racial equity movement and racial justice movements of the last few years. So um, I lean towards uh, supporting Jared's position, um, uh, his nomination. Uh, I, I, I think that being someone from DC and, you know, raising a family in DC, um, uniquely gives you a perspective that uh, workers in DC need. So I threw my t two cents in and happy to get other opinions. Um, thank you, Monica, for that. Um, I would just like to add that um, I think my experience is a little bit um, helpful in regards to your uh, concern with, um, um, you know, racial and 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 otherwise uh, disparities in the industry. I I can definitely say that I've seen. Sorry, <laughs> please don't mind the baby. Um, in the last you know five years, I've been at at restaurants that, um, you know, did some of some of the most deplorable things, whether it's, you know, garnishing wages unfairly or, um, you know, again, to the, the discrimination against women and, and Latino workers, um, you know, folks having to work two jobs to make a living wage. I've seen all of that. I've also seen, there we go, the best parts. Um, I've seen employers that, that go above and beyond uh, make sure that their their uh, workers are treated fairly and equitably, um, and they have work life balance. Um, so I guess I'm saying I've seen I've seen the dark side, but I've seen the light as well, and and I know what that looks like, and I know that I can work to uh, to bring it to everyone, not just a select few. And I apologize again if that was hard to understand, but five months old don't know the difference, do they? <laughs> Uh, do we have any other comment from the, the members? All right, hearing none, we will uh, move to a vote. Um, so I'll make, uh, now I have to uh, freshen up on my Robert's rules, um, but uh, I think we can do this as we have to move to to do a vote, and then we'll just go through one by one and do a hand uh, hand vote. So um, I'll move to call the vote, and then someone will need to second the order or second the call. So I'm I so move. Second. All right. Um, so first, if you would like to vote for Zach Hoffman, please raise your hand. All right. If you would like to vote for uh, Jared Span, please raise your right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. And Tracy Javier. All right. So, congratulations, Jared. You are our new chair uh, for the council. Thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and as a note, we do have someone taking minutes that will be um, distributed to the group and will be posted um, online as well per the Open Meetings Act um, shortly after the meeting. Um, so next on the agenda, we have to talk about a schedule of meetings. So. The law, um, unless someone wants to correct me, I'm I'm 90% sure it doesn't say that we have a, a requirement to meet so many times a year. Um, so we can set that ourselves, um, whether we want to meet. Oh, Mr. Watts, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, just so for the minutes, I just want to get a uh, number count for the minutes, please. 
Say, uh, so can you speak a little? Speak, speak up. Yeah, I just need for the minutes. I want to get a number count. The red right can just raise your hand. Sorry, so I'm gonna count. Let's see. Um, you said how many current members? You know, you know, number, num, no, number count for votes for the chair. So we can have. Oh, it was um, uh, Mr. Hoffman with one, Mr. Span with six. And Tracy, Ms. Javier with uh, zero. All right, great. Thank you. All right. Okay, so um, I'll defer to the group on um, meeting schedules. I know we are, we are busy, um, as as mentioned, but I, as having served on other councils before, some councils meet once a month, some councils meet uh, only four times a year. Some councils meet every other month, so it's really up to us um, to set our own schedules. Um, that's really worked best for all of us. Um, so I'll open it to the floor. I personally defer to anybody else's recommendation. Um, we have our commission meetings uh, tend to be on Tuesdays, so if we could not do Tuesday, that's anything else is fine with me. Um, uh, I'd like to propose that we meet monthly for now while we're ramping up and pulling all the pieces together and then go to a, every other month or quarterly when we're ready. But I do think there's a lot of work to do now and just wanted to add that OHR. We are onboarding the, our tipped wage workers manager um, any day now. We're just waiting on the paperwork from DCHR. Um, and we have posted the other positions and we're trying to fill those positions quickly. So I would love to have the input mm -hmm. and guidance of this body as we uh, launch and set up that program. I agree with Director Palacio on that. All right, once, sounds like once a month. Uh... Everyone is okay with that. Cool. Okay. Um, so let's so figure team, out. Uh, yeah. uh, Ms. So my, my team will work with the chair, the chair to coordinate the agenda and to get everything ready for the two weeks. Right. So we can meet as early as Monday. Awesome. So, um, Jared, uh, if you did, you hear that? Okay. Uh, I did not. I'm sorry. Can you? One more time. Um, this is Michael Watts. So my team and I will meet with you to, to work on the agenda and get the notes about the members. Um, and my group can be as early as Monday. Okay, okay. That, that that works great. Thank you. So is this generally a good time in the mornings? Um, Cause I don't know, do we want to say now, uh, like every every uh what is this the third thursday second thursday this is the third thursday third thursday third thursday of the month at 11 a.m okay Um, okay, so it sounds like we have our, our meeting set um, third Thursday of the month, 11 a.m. Uh, for now, and then we can come, of course, revisit it in the future at any future meeting um, and change our schedules, um, but that will be it for now. Um, we, are, we have some time. Are, are there any other comments or questions for the council on um, maybe discussing what we should be doing at the next meeting or um, how you – just any other comments? Um, I'd like to have OHR's uh, team manager present a little bit about what we're doing and how we're setting up at OHR next time. Um, so if you could add that to the agenda, I'd appreciate it. I'd also like to see a demonstration of the tip uh, portal um, from both the side of, you know, you as an employer inputting information and then also what does that look like on the back end, if that's possible. See what kind of information that puts out and how it's verified. So currently, the, the, so currently, 
Um, the, the new requirements are not finalized, but we can do administration of what, what it is currently needed. If you want. Okay, so none of that is happening at the, at <clears throat> currently. Like nobody's. Oh no, we submit. No, we're receiving reports in the old format while we're developing the new um, systematic for the system. Mm. Got it. Got and, it. Also, and also, by law, we're required to take paper reports as well. So we have to involve. But we can do an demonstration, so you will get a sense of uh, the, the you know the, the system. That, how will be? It's just some technical changes, but we definitely mm -hmm. we can do that for you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, of course, um, so I know I kind of led today's meeting, but moving forward, Jared, our chair will will take the reins and and lead us through um, and we'll make sure he's fully equipped to do so. Um, and we hope that soon, maybe in a few months, maybe if everyone is comfortable, we could see each other in person, um, hopefully. Uh, that would be that would be wonderful. But um, until then, we will keep doing these via WebEx. Is everyone okay with the WebEx platform? Mm -hmm. Cool. Is there any other business to consider? All right. If not, someone can make a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. think it was unanimous. All right. So we'll adjourn at 11.52. Thank you, everyone. Um, be on the lookout for more information, and we'll see you at the next meeting. Have a good day, everyone. Okay, Aaliyah, you good? Yes, we are. Thanks so much again. Not a problem. Yeah, Alan texted me on the side and said he wasn't going to do the breakout session. So, yeah, I yeah, did, I, I, I just stayed on to make sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw that there were no other attendees. So I just figured, yeah. Okay, thanks no so much. All right, you're welcome. Take care. All right, bye bye. bye, -bye.